We are going to be talking about ionic bonding. Please. All right, ionic bonding. This is in chapter 20.2 of the textbook. Uh, te you know, the text pages are listed up there. Um, and b before we talk about ionic bonding, let's just mention general definition of bonding. If two elements bond, what does that mean? They come together. Okay, so they come together. They gain new properties. What do we call it when they bond? No, what is the new thing? It's called an element before, afterward it's called a compound, right? Okay, so a bond is when two or more elements gain, lose, or share Okay, so a bond is just when two or more elements gain, lose, or share electrons. <coughs> and after the bond occurs, we said that forms a compound. And that compound, uh, all that means is that those atoms have been pushed together now. Okay, they're staying, they stay in the exact same configuration. They don't wobble around. They, they stick together. Okay? I mean, not stick together as in like glue, but stick together as in, in the same way that the moon and the, the earth stick together. Okay? Make sense? They're attracted to each other. Like a magnet. Yeah, they, they, like a magnet. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Long distance high five. Okay. Um, all right, so an ionic bond. always occurs between a metal and a non-metal give me an example of a metal and a non-metal From an element, though. Sodium is a metal. Helium is oxygen. You had, you had to pick. You had to pick a noble gas. Oxygen, right? So, so uh, sodium and oxygen could bond. Okay, and if sodium and oxygen bond, it'd be called an ionic bond. Any time a metal and a non-metal bond, it's ionic. Okay, and if it's an and if it's an ionic bond, it's always a metal and a non-metal. Okay, there's no exceptions to that. Ionic always metal and non-metal. Okay, so remember, guys, metals on our periodic table tend to be on which side? They tend to be on the left of the stair step. Okay, so these over here are my uh, metals, and then my non-metals uh, are are over here. Okay, so if something from over here bonds to something from over here, it's ionic, okay? And in an ionic bond, uh, the reason why it's called ionic is because always, 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 one atom is going to lose electrons, and one atom is always going to gain electrons. And it, it could be multiple electrons. That's the reason I put a little apostrophe S after it. Let's, let's see if I can turn the light on. Maybe that'll help a little bit. Uh, 
Okay, so one one element <laughs> always loses an electron, and one element always gains an electron. The way it always happens, and I keep on saying the word always, which is rare in chemistry, the word always, uh, but the way it always happens is the metal loses an electron and the nonmetal gains an electron every single time. Okay, if there's an ionic bond, I know it's always a metal and a nonmetal, and if it's an ionic bond, I always know the metal lost the, uh, the metal lost either multiple electrons or the non-metal gained. Okay. Keep in mind, guys, the goal of a bond is to do what? To gain? Stability. Stability. Okay, the whole goal of, a, of, of bonding is to gain stability. Okay, so just by using logic... What makes a metal more stable? Gaining electrons or losing electrons? What makes a metal more stable? If the goal of an ionic bond is to make things more stable, then what would make a metal more stable? Gaining electrons or losing? Losing, losing because metals tend to lose electrons in ionic bonds. Right? So a metal is more stable if it loses electrons, and a non-metal is more stable if it... Gains electrons. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Let's say I have a lithium and oxygen bonding. Okay, so a lithium atom has how many electrons? Three. Three, right? And that's going to be in how many energy levels? One, two. Two, because it's in period two, right? Okay, so I know it's going to have two energy levels. And the innermost energy level can hold how many electrons? Two. Two. And it has three, and so that leaves over one. Right? Yeah. All right, and uh, let's say oxygen. Oxygen has how many? Uh, eight. It has eight electrons. Okay, so that's going to be uh, on two different energy levels. The reason why it's on two different energy levels is because it's in period two. Okay, so it should have two in the middle. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Because so two plus six is eight, so that gives me eight electrons. Right? Yes. So that, that makes sense. So lithium wants to have a full valence shell. What do you think is easier for lithium to gain seven electrons? Or for lithium to lose one electron? Lose one. It makes sense. Okay, It just makes sense for lithium to lose one. And we'll, we'll go more in depth in a little bit. But it makes sense for lithium to lose one. So lithium can lose one electron. And oxygen, since oxygen has empty spots, only two empty spots, it kind of makes sense to me for oxygen to gain that. That does make it, it makes it have, that it has nine electrons right now. I want it to have eight in the valence. Yeah, eight, eight in the outside. Yes, Travis. Lithium is a metal because it's on that side of the periodic table. Yes. No, yeah, it's a metal, so it loses electrons. No. Metal doesn't bond with noble gas. A metal always bonds with the non-metal, except for in metallic bonding. But that didn't, uh, don't worry about that. Yeah. Oh, we're not done. We're not done with this example. Yeah, yeah. We we, we still got some. Some, uh, some more to go. So, since lithium lost one electron, that means it lost one negative charge. So if it lost one negative charge, that means its charge went up by one. If it lost negative, then it went up. Right? So that means this lithium is left as a positive ion. Because it lost negative charge. If it lost negative charge, it became positive. Because look, lithium has three protons. 
So it has three protons and two electrons, and so now it's positive. Does that make sense? So it lost an electron that makes it positive. Okay, so I would write this as lithium one plus. Okay, that would be the ionic charge. What now? What do you mean more positive? It becomes more positive than it was. Yeah, it was it was neutral, but now it's positive. All right, the oxygen is it satisfied? Yeah. Is the oxygen satisfied? Does it have enough ele enough electrons? Yes. No. And once eight, it has seven. So it needs one more, right? Okay, so it needs one more electron. Okay, so you see in, in total, and we're, we're not drawing a full source here, but there, another source has to give another electron, and so this will become a negative. And we're going to get there in just a second. Okay, so oxygen becomes a negative ion. All right, so we would write this, since it gained two electrons, we would gain, write this as oxygen two negative. It gained negative charge. If you, if you gained an electron, you gained negative charge. It's kind of like if, if I gave you some debt, you gained negative money. Yeah. Why not? Wait, if... Okay, everybody good so far? Uh-huh. In the outside. It had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You look at the valence. Yeah, all you look at is the outside. All right, so it has to gain two. Where do you think it's going to gain this second electron from? Another lithium. Okay, so for lithium and oxygen to bond, I need two lithiums. Because lithium can only give up one, but oxygen needs two. Okay, so when lithium and oxygen bond, I end up with lithium oxide. Hmm? That makes sense? So is that what they both It takes two lithiums and one oxygen, and I get lithium oxide. I'm saying, so is that the chemical formula? That's the chemical formula for the molecule that it makes. Yeah. Yeah, I just didn't draw it out. All right, so let me show you how to get these charges because the, the, the way the place you get these charges, there's no point in drawing it out every time, right? That's going to take too much time. So I'm going I'm to show you the, the charges are readily available in periodic tables, so let me show you how to get those real quick. Okay, all you want to do is on the periodic table, for anything that's a metal, okay, remember my metals are on this side, okay, so for anything that's a metal, my charge is just going to be the group number. Okay, so anything in this group, is going to have a charge of plus one. Anything in this group has a charge of plus two. Simple, right? So that's for the metals. That's all you got to do. Just look at that number right there. Okay, that's also the number of valence electrons. So that makes sense. The, the charge is going to equal the number of valence electrons because it loses all of its valence. When I move over to the nonmetals, okay, in the nonmetals, since it's gaining electrons, we're going to count over to the period, over to the noble gases. So anything in this group will have a charge of negative 1, negative 2. Okay? So anything in, in the oxygen group will have a charge of 1, negative 2. Anything in nitrogen will have a charge of 1, 2, negative 3. Okay, so we'll have positive charge on this side, negative charge on this side, and you just count over. So fluorine, I move over 1, and so that would be a charge of negative 1. Carbon is a little bit tricky. It could go, it could go positive or negative, which makes sense. It has, it has four valence because it's in group four, 14, I mean. Since, since it has four valence, it could either gain four or it could lose four. It's, it's kind of flexible. But we're not, yeah, we're not, don't worry about that. I'm, 
I'm not going to require y'all know that. All right, what would be the charge on sulfur? Negative two. The charge would be negative two. Start from right here over one over two. Huh? Don't worry about that. Yeah. Just just go that way. What would be the charge on calcium? Positive two. What would be the charge on lithium? Positive one. What would be the charge on fluorine? Negative one. Negative one. We good? Huh? Boron is going to be positive three. D d d this, these two lines right here, guys, we're really not going to focus on much because they're a little confusing. So I, if I were y'all, just just wait for chemistry class. And in chemistry class, y'all y'all cover that then. Huh? All right. How many valence electrons does fluorine have? Seven, because it's in group 17, right? So it needs to gain one electron to be eight. So that gives it a charge of negative one. Or you can count over and just say over one is negative one. Yes. All right. Helium, helium is zero. Helium is not going to get a charge. All right, if I have oxygen, I go one, two. That's a charge of negative two. If I'm here for selenium, that'd be the charge of one, two, negative two. Chlorine, negative one. Make sense? Am I good? Okay, so real quick, um, I want to uh, give you kind of a rationalization. I, you know, for me, remember the the question that we're asking is why, and so my my question is, okay, why is it easier for lithium to lose one and for chlor and for oxygen to gain two? I mean, because I know, but but why is that easier though? I mean. Yeah, but what's what's easier to push seven rocks downhill or carry one rock up the hill? Uh, you know, it's easier to push seven down here. So, so you know, the the quantity of electrons doesn't really tell us anything. What we need to look at is the atom in and of itself. Okay, so look to do that, I want to compare uh, lithium and fluorine. Okay, looking at lithium. Okay, lithium is in group two. Let me put this up here. Okay, lithium is in group two, so that means it has two energy levels. And looking at the periodic table, guys, how many protons does lithium have? Three. All right, we move over. Let's move over to fluorine. Okay, fluorine is in what period? Two. Two, so how many energy levels does it have? Two. Two. But how many protons does fluorine have? Nine. Nine. Okay, so you see for the same number of energy levels, lithium has three protons and fluorine has nine protons. You following me so far? Okay, so the electrons out here see three protons. So and if I'm an electron, which, which atom do you think I'm greater attracted to? The one with three protons or the one with nine protons? The one with nine protons. Okay, so fluorine pulls on atoms harder, or pulls on electrons harder than lithium does. So what that does is that takes this energy level and it tends to expand it out. Okay, so lithium's electrons are far out, which makes it really easy to pluck an electron off because those electrons are really far out. And fluorine's electrons are really close in, which makes them hard to pluck off. You'd have to pull really hard on those electrons. So, sure, it's easier just to add one electron, but it's also really difficult to remove an electron. Does that make sense? Okay, that's what we call high ionization energy. Okay, so fluorine has a very high ionization energy, and lithium has a very low <coughs> ionization energy. All right. Question mark, you mean that you put two 
let's let us let us let us go through a few a few questions real quick and make sure everybody's make sure everybody's good. Ionic bonds, guys, always happen between what two things? Metals and non-metals. Okay. So water. Think about the chemical equation for water. Is water an ionic bond? No. No, because why? It's it's two it's two non-metals. Okay, so I know that's not an ionic bond. Okay. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. I have one more thing to explain to y'all. Oh, calm down. Um. All right. Once they once they trade once they trade electrons, guys. We said that the negative that the um the metal will tend to gain what kind of charge? Positive. And the non-metal tends to gain negative. So non-metal negative. N N. Non-metal negative. Metal positive. Okay. So don't don't non-metals negative. N N. Okay. Uh, so what do you think holds the atom together after it bonds? Think about it, guys. We just said that lithium. If if I'm talking about this reaction here, lithium becomes positive. And oxygen becomes negative. So, what do you think holds the atoms together? The electric force, right? Because think, if I have a positive, if I have a positively charged item and a negatively charged item, what do they tend to do? They tend to move together, right? That positive and negative tend to move together. Okay. So, if I have a positively charged lithium and a negatively charged oxygen. Okay, then they're going to tend to move together, and that's what holds them together after they bond. They're, they're, it's the electric force that holds them together after they bond. That makes sense. That's pretty simple, isn't it? It seems like it should be complicated, more complicated than that, but it's actually really, uh, really straightforward and simple. Okay, we good? Thank <laughs> you.